สวัสดีค่ะ Welcome to Hot Thai Kitchen. So today I am so excited to be sharing with you all the ways that I know to make Thai sticky rice. Now I've made sticky rice a few different ways over the past several years on the show, but today I want to do a complete roundup, a complete guide of seven different ways that you can do it. Yes, seven. So it doesn't matter if you don't have this tool or that gadget, you don't have time or you have time. One of these ways is going to work for you. Before I start, if you've never experienced the joy of Thai sticky rice, or what we call k a o n i o you have got to try it. It is so good. And so Thai sticky rice comes in a bag like this, and it's usually labeled glutinous rice or Thai sweet rice, even though it's not sweet. You want to make sure that it is from Thailand, and the grains are going to be sort of medium length and opaque. Let's get started. So regardless of which method you choose, the first step is exactly the same for all of them and is absolutely necessary, and that is washing the rice. You want to wash out the excess starch that's left there by the milling process, and then swish it around pretty vigorously. So see how cloudy that water is. If you don't wash it, it would be like cooking rice with a pinch of flour in it. So you can imagine how that might gum up your rice, right? So you want to rinse that off and do it a few times until the water runs relatively clear. So now that our rice is washed, let's move on to the cooking methods. Now the seven different methods can be divided into two categories: the soak and steam methods and the no soak method. So let's start with the soak and steam methods because that's the more traditional way. Mm, I just love the smell of rice, even when it's not cooking. It smells so good to me. All right, so soaking the rice, you just want to take room temp or cold water. You want to do this for a minimum, absolute minimum of three hours. I like to do four because if your rice is old, for example, it might be a little drier, might need a little extra time. You can do it overnight, up to 12 hours. However, if you go long, when you're done, the the soaked rice will be quite brittle, so you have to kind of handle it gently when you're going to cook it afterwards. All right, now. If you can leave it out at room temperature, it'll be totally fine. But if you're nervous and you're gonna go like eight hours, 12 hours, you can stick it in the fridge. Not a problem at all. So the first one is to use a traditional bamboo cone steamer, or in Thai we call h u a t So this is made specifically for making sticky rice. Even though you could steam whatever you want inside of this, you want to add just a little bit of water in here. You don't want to add too much because this cone goes in pretty deep, and you want to leave a good amount of space between the water. And the cone, so that when it's boiling vigorously, it doesn't touch the bottom of the rice. So I would say, like one and a half inch of water is plenty. And with the bamboo cone, you want to soak this in water first for like 10 minutes or so, just to get it wet, so that it will not stick to the rice when it's done. And the great thing about this method is, it doesn't matter how much rice you use. You don't have to measure any water. You don't have to use cups, use finger method. Nothing. You just put an amount of rice in there, and that's it. I'm gonna be making a lot of rice today, so I'm only gonna do a little bit per method. Otherwise, we'll have rice out the wazoo by the end of this. If you have a bamboo type lid, it will be better because this will not condensation will not drip back onto the rice. But like pot lids are totally fine. So once the water is vigorously boiling, this goes on top, and you put your lid on, and it could be this lid. And then we're gonna steam this for about 25 minutes, but we're gonna flip it halfway through, and I'll show you how that's done when the time comes. So the rice is kind of partially done now. There we go. Hip, hip. Try to like. Okay, there we go. Yay! And then we put it back on for another 10 minutes. And then that is beautifully cooked sticky rice. You just loosen it up and then roll it onto. A plate, <laughs> which is a cute little lump of rice. Oh my God! Look how beautifully perfect that is. Woo! Oh, it's perfect. Look at that. The grains beautifully intact. There's no soggy grains anywhere. Nice and dry. This is why the bamboo cone steamer is the traditional method. It really makes perfect rice. One power tip. Once you're done with this, you want to get it soaking in water immediately. There's a little bit of gooiness from the rice left on there. If you leave it to dry, it'll be impossible to clean off. So this, do not delay the cleaning. 
if you don't have a fancy bamboo steamer, any steaming rack will do. It can be one of these, it could be one of these. This is a rice cooker insert actually, any steaming rack. So you're also gonna need some sort of a cloth. So I use muslin, uh, you wanna use natural fiber because it's food, it's gonna be steamed, you're probably gonna eat some lint. So you know, you don't wanna use synthetic materials. You wanna soak this first, which I almost forgot to do. You wanna get this wet, otherwise it will stick to the rice when it's done which I learned the hard way. I actually like to do a donut trick, which means I put a little shot glass or something in the middle, and then I put the rice on, and then you take the cup out. Yes, that says Adam's bar. Adam doesn't actually have a bar. It doesn't have to be perfect, is it makes the rice cook more evenly, because I find if you make a big pile, sometimes the middle will be a little bit undercooked, and this way it'll cook faster too. And then you wanna make sure you leave space around the edges so don't block the entire rack so that you have plenty of room for steam to come up. And then you just steam this for again, about 25 minutes, 30 minutes if you're doing a lot. And with this method, especially with the donut trick, you don't have to flip it like we do with the cone steamer. Ta-da! Careful, it's hot. And the good thing about the soak and steam method is you can't really overcook it in a bad way like if you let it go a little too long whatever like nothing bad is going to happen so it's a really great foolproof method Ta -da! look at all sticky rice donut the bottom of the rice where it's touching the cloth can get a little bit gummy but i don't find like once you fluff it up and mix it in i don't find that's a big deal at all ha, 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 ha. Mm, perfect and if you really don't have any steaming implements, you surely have some sort of a sieve, okay? Well, a metal sieve, anyway. Don't do this with a plastic sieve. And again, you put a little bit of water at the bottom, make a little divot on the, on, in the bottom so that, you know, the rice is more evenly distributed. Close that up, and off you go to the stove. Same deal. Ooh, plop that. <laughs> a little bit less graceful, a little bit stuck here on the sieve. Just look at the bottom. Oh, that's not too bad. It turned out really well. Sometimes I find this method has a bit of a soggy bottom as well, but this one worked out really well. So there you go. Three different methods for any kind of equipment. So there is a fourth soak and steam method that produces extra soft sticky rice. And this involves just one little extra step of steeping your soaked rice. So this is soaked, washed, and drained. And you just pour off the boil water over it. And then you let it steep for about 10 minutes before draining and then just steaming as usual. And you can steam this any way that we discuss. And this is a really useful method if you know that you're gonna serve this rice at room temp. So maybe it's like a potluck where food's gonna kind of be sitting out or a picnic or something. Sticky rice, when you just steam it, dries out really quickly. So this is a really handy method. For this, the rice will stay soft even if it's not warm anymore. And this works because you're basically forcing the rice to absorb just a little bit more water. So when it cooks up, it's more tender. Let's take a look if we can see any difference between the one that's been steeped. So I don't know if you can see this on camera, but you can, to me, it's very obvious that the rice grains are a little bit bigger and it's softer. I prefer it to be a little bit on the chewier side, but again, if you're not gonna eat that hot, this is the way you wanna do it because this will not go hard or dry if it cools down. So at this point, I just wanna to touch on why we like to soak and steam sticky rice and not just stick it in a pot with water like you do any kind of rice. So the reason is sticky rice can only absorb a small amount of water. That's why it's so dense when it's cooked, right? And so if there's any extra water that it can't absorb sitting there, it'll turn the rice mushy really quickly. It's also really sensitive to boiling water. So if you boil a pot of water, put the rice in, the outside will mush before the inside cooks through. So by soaking the sticky rice, you allow the rice to absorb all the water that it possibly can. You take it out of water and then steam it. So this way there's no chance you can overcook it because you can't add too much water to that, right? So to look at another way, with regular, say, jasmine rice, the rice absorbs water and cooks at the same time. But with sticky rice, you let the rice absorb the water first and then you cook the water that's already in the rice. 
Having said that, it is possible to cook sticky rice in water. It's just a little bit trickier, but these are the methods we're going to look at next. Before we move on, I'd like to tell you about today's sponsor, Skillshare. So if you like my videos, it probably means that you love to learn new things and you love to create. So I think you're going to love Skillshare, which is an online learning community with thousands of classes on topics like photography, interior design, cooking classes, and even how to build a YouTube channel. Most classes are less than 60 minutes long and they're made up of short lessons. So even for a busy mom like me, it's easy to just watch a few lessons a day and before you know, it, you're done. One class I really like is called Easy and Versatile Baking, The One Yeast Dough You Need to Know by Julia Tertian. And I like that it gives you a really solid foundation for understanding bread baking, which is perfect if you're just getting started. So if you want to learn a new skill or explore a new passion, check out Skillshare. And the first 1,000 people to click the link in my description will get a free trial of Skillshare Premium Membership. And then after that, it's less than $10 a month for an annual subscription. So the first no soak method is what I call the steam the bowl method. And I got this idea actually from my mom who used to use it to cook her own personal bowl of brown rice when the rice cooker was busy with white rice. So what you want is a steamer for this, but instead of the rack steamer, I just want to show you an alternative way. If you have a big stock pot, you can get one of these steamer racks you can get at Asian grocery stores for like a couple of bucks. Now you can use a regular pot lid, but I like the bamboo lid because then there's no risk of condensation falling into the rice, uh, you can also just cover the rice bowl with foil or something. The rice has already been washed. Again, you want to wash all the rice and drained really, 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 really well. Not just like pour it off. Oh yeah, that's good. No, you want to drain and shake and make sure there's no extra water. And then you want to add water at the ratio of one part rice to two thirds water. So less water than rice. So the water is boiling. I'm going to um, turn it off so I don't steam burn myself because I have to put this bowl into and this will take a little bit longer. Ooh. So 25 to 30 minutes for this one. Okay. So the top of it, you can see looks a little bit mushy and the no soak method is always going to be less ideal than the soak method. If we look at the bottom. Yeah. It's a little bit softer. I could probably add a little bit less water to this one, but that's the thing with cooking sticky rice in water is you have to be super precise and not a little bit more or you make the rice a little bit too soft. The next method is the rice cooker method. What? If you can do it in the rice cooker, why do we bother with anything else at all? Well, that's because not all rice cookers can do a good job. It will work if your rice cooker cooks at a slow and gentle pace. So I had one years ago that did an okay job with a little bit of crispiness at the bottom. Then the previous one that I had did not do a good job at all. But then this one that I have, the Zoji Rushi, which I've done a review for, um, I'll link to that below, does a perfect job. Like I was so surprised how well it does. And it has a special function for that, the sweet rice function. And sweet is just another term for sticky rice. You start with washed rice, obviously, but you have to drain it really, really, really well. The ratio is the same. Two thirds part of water going in there. One very important note, you do not use the sweet rice line in the pot because that is meant for Japanese short grain sticky rice. If you've got a cooker that has a brown rice function, it might work better. So try that. We choose the sweet function and then... So this you'll notice takes uh, quite a long time. For that amount, it takes 35 to 40 minutes, but that's why it turns out so well because it cooks at such a slow and gentle pace. Let's take a look. La. Ooh, the grain looks perfect. It's almost steamer good. The bottom of the pot has a, ew, hot. The bottom of the pot has a little bit of like, a little bit of like a whiteness, like parts that's a little less translucent. Once you fluff it and mix it in, you can't really tell because it's so slight. Ooh. It's pretty amazing. Like if you didn't tell me, I thought you just cooked this in a steamer. This rice cooker does a really, really good job. Mm. It's a little bit, maybe a little bit softer than the soak and steam method. Here, Adam, what do you think? It's a tiny bit more moist than the traditional method, the first method. Right. 
it's a little bit more dry than the bowl method. Got it. Yes, yes. Last and actually least, because this is the least ideal method, and that's the microwave. It works, but I find it kind of fussy more so than all the other methods, and also each microwave's a little different, so this is something you're gonna have to play around with your machine a little bit. So I've got my rice here washed and drained, and the first thing we're gonna do is we're gonna do a quick soak in hot water. So I'm just gonna cover it and let it sit, ah, and let it sit for 15 minutes. It has been 15 minutes. I'm gonna drain this rice again really, 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 really well. And then I'm gonna add fresh water at the same ratio of one part rice to two thirds water. Now, could I have just measure the water and use that soaking water and just microwave it directly without draining and adding new water? Yes, you could. Um, you're probably gonna add, need to add a little bit more water than that, which I haven't tried exactly. Here's the trick. I have never used this microwave before. At my place, with a 900 watt microwave, I do it for three minutes, stir, two minutes, stir, and then one minute, and then it's done. So three, two, one. This is an 1100 watt, so who knows? So I'm gonna do two, two, one, and then see what happens. You wanna cover it with something. Some people use saran wrap, but I don't like the idea of microwaving saran wrap. So a plate will work just fine. So the rice is gonna be still raw, obviously, but I'm gonna give it a stir just to redistribute. Hmm, looks like it, this could have also done a three minute initially, but it's all right. We'll do two more minutes. Okay, ooh, that's a lot of steam inside. Ooh, it's looking all right. You can see that it's dried up a little bit, but you can see some whiteness on the inside of the grain. So you wanna ooh, fold the bottom up to the top. Okay, I think one more minute and this should be good. Mm, I think that could use another minute. So maybe I should have done a three, two, one after all, but I'm gonna do a stir. Oh, but the bottom, the bottom looks good though. So maybe all it really needs is to just like be stirred and just sit and, you know, rest in its own heat. So this is the microwave rice that's been sitting for a few minutes. So let's see. Mmm. Some reason it's less flavorful than the other rice. I don't know, the microwave zapped flavor out of it or something. I don't know. It just feels that way. Yeah, I don't like it as much as the, uh, the one we just did. I can't explain why. Honestly, it feels like the outside is softer. Like it's not overcooked, but the outside is a little bit gummier. You're right. And that goes to show you what I was talking about, about the rice really needing gentle heat. Otherwise the outside will be mushy before the inside cooks through. But with the microwave, it's pretty quick, right? It's like pretty high heat in there. So that's why you get this like sort of gummy situation between the rice grains. So it's, it's not ideal, but it works. And that is it. I am now so hungry because I've been making sticky rice all morning and eaten nothing of it. So I'm gonna go and eat sticky rice with these chicken wings, which by the way, sticky rice goes great with wings, with fried meat, grilled meat, anything that you use your hands, like skewers of stuff, even Thai salads, and you just dip the rice in the salad. I'll link to some recipes that go well with sticky rice below. If you have other sticky rice making methods that I don't know about, please share with us in the comments below and subscribe to the show if you like it. And I will see you next time for your next delicious Thai meal with hopefully less sticky rice. Bye.